he didn't even cross the finish line. I would, I would have gone, but I wasn't going to get some, some nonsensical handout like, oh, let me stop at the finish line and let you kind of just cross. No, no, I will go out on my terms. If I have to drive off a cliff in reverse, I will. No one gets the last laugh on me. And L, I've had plenty of those in my life. The last laugh, never. All right, let's make this fucking matchup chart. Are you guys ready for this? Are you ready to experience Olimar? He's handsome. All right, this is an online tier list, so this is playing in the current space we're in, so this does not reflect if we were playing offline. I'm not going to give numbers. I'm going to go winning. All right, so let's, let's do this. So let's start with Steve. I don't have a lot of practice in this matchup. It's something I'm learning more as I go through. However, I do feel that it... I, I want to say it leans towards an evenish matchup. I played against Aaron recently, and that was a lot of learning, kind of just navigating certain things. I think if you get the lead on Steve... If you get, like, the lead on Steve, it can be very difficult because he can't approach it that well aside from, like, minecart stuff. If you're aware of a lot of his tricks, I think you can get around it. The blocks are annoying and they can kind of disrupt your flow for approaching, but I don't necessarily think it's bad. I don't think you ha lack the tools. Just be a little bit careful around him, know what you can do against him, and just... I think as long as you're not, like, strapped for knowledge on everything, you're going to be pretty okay. So I, do, I feel it's very even. It's very back and forth. Steve, it's hard. has some annoying stuff. If they get a lead, it can get hard. But it's not unwinnable by any means due to Steve's lack of mobility and kind of a not really a projectile. And then Olimar can die kind of easily if he's not careful. And Steve has a good few options to just burst on him like the, the mine card when using like the redstone, I believe it's called. That can kind of crack him open a bit if he's not careful. So definitely feels pretty even regardless. But that could change in time. But I'm going to put it even for now. Almost towards, yeah. I definitely don't think Alex wins. I have no reason to think that. And, I mean, I still have a lot to learn. I played at Aaron the other day, and he won a decent amount, but it didn't feel... It didn't feel one-sided. It felt like I just didn't know how to properly deal with things. It was, it was like, me. Toy rush him every day. Um, I'll die. Alright, Alf, that's a, that's a big lose. No, wait, that's a big win. Sorry. Um, and I know you're thinking, Myron, why does it say winning? Slight winning, losing, big losing. And that's because the matchups I'm going to have in big losing... You should not win online if your opponent isn't a fucking idiot. But they are. So. Banjo. Mm, I'm going to go slight winning. I feel like he doesn't have a super great approach option. I mean, he relies off a lot of, like, grenade egg stuff. But Pikmin can intercept that really well. It's very similar to, like, online or offline in the sense that you can kind of just intercept what he does well. He's easy to hit as long as you play it like a somewhat safe spacing and respect the few buttons he has, like a dash attack or a side B or something. You're not going to get caught by a lot of stuff. It just it feels like he's like a slow projectile-ish character with some boxing options, but he doesn't ha he doesn't do anything good enough to really get you. Like for instance, someone like a Samus has the Zare, has the dash attack zone break, has really long reach on aerials that catch you. Banjo, none of that. It just feels like he's gimped in a lot of ways. So it's just pretty straightforward for him. You kind of just out projectile him, you hit harder than him in a lot of cases, and you can combo him pretty dangerously. Bayonetta. My turn mm, now. Slight winning. Bayo. Normally I would have her in kind of hard winning, but I think online it gets a bit more difficult just because it's harder to react to things like after burn a kick. It's harder, like things can just get messed up, and it's going to be easier for her to clip you with a lot of random things. And she can honestly do a lot of off clips like that. If you get clipped with an afterburner kick, you're in the air, potentially in disadvantage. You get clipped with the wrong tilt, you can get popped up into something that is bad. Uh, which twist can clip you, especially at the ledge. And then they kind of just do that until they back air you. I still think Olimar beats her, though, just because she still has to approach in a lot of ways. It's just a little bit easier for her to like catch you slipping. But she still doesn't have the best way to just approach, the best way to pressure you. Um, you still kind of hit her way harder than she hits you on average. If you have good STI, her up B combos aren't that bad. And it's just her lack of ability to really get at you on average, I think, makes it a big deal. It's, it's pretty straightforward, really. Like, just be smart about your side B so you're not getting witch-timed all the time. Understand what you can and can't punish. Like, when you can punish, like, a, a heal slide or something like that, get your combo, rinse and repeat, and just force her into that uncomfortable neutral where she doesn't have the best option. Just online, you gotta be a little bit more careful about maybe the stage or the distance chat because it can be really 
it can be really hard to if you're too close or if you're playing with this weird like super up close facing you can call it slipping you just can't react but if you give yourself a little bit of room to try and intercept her neutral and not get close enough then she'll have a hard time committing and then you can kind of play it by ear and force responses out of her with grabs poking up smashes and side beats and stuff like that but at the end of the day i definitely give it to Olimar to win mm, i'm gonna lean towards even i know this is a matchup that kind of goes you, you get really divisive opinions on what this is offline I think that online, or offline, it'd probably be like a Bowser win or something like that. Or not a Bowser win, sorry, an Olimar win. But online, it can be a bit hard. A lot of Olimar's struggles online come from the fact that you can't react to things. And you'll this is like a recurring theme you'll see through a lot of these characters. You can't react to things, so your disadvantage and other, even shield pressure, like up close quarter scenarios, get really dangerous because oftentimes with Olimar, you need to be like really quick with your options. You need to be like perfect timing you have to because if you do it too early you're going to be in lag and get punished if you do it too late while you're already getting hit and that makes it really really difficult to to do much with so that's why it's so bad so i think with bowser specifically off stage he's got a really big thing he's got really big fare at the ledge he's got he can kind of react to a lot of things without being i believe it's frame six he can kind of just figure out whatever you do and hit you and he's going to live really long Whereas offline, you could maybe parry a bit more consistently. You could kind of zone him out and make him play catch up with you. But offline, you have to kind of get a bit more up close and personal with Bowser, which no one really likes doing. Yes, you still combo him. You still deal a lot of damage to him. If you play your matchup right, it can be frustrating for him and you can camp him out. And that's why I think it keeps even. But shield pressuring him, it's just kind of non-existent because he'll be most everything you do unless it's like really well spaced. And you got to be careful not to accidentally buffer any options. So I think even it can go either way. If he lives a long time, he's going to kill you. If you're able to get your combos and keep him out really well and get free damage as he approaches, you're going to win. So it's just kind of whoever's doing that job better. Bowser Jr. I got to put that in a winner. The character just... I, I think it feels very similar to offline. And that he doesn't... He doesn't have much. Like... Yes, Bowser Juniors have their tricks and stuff like that, and I think they can get away with a lot of players not knowing how they work, but myself included at times. But side B just loses to things like like the clown cart thing, just loses to F smash, loses to an up smash right under it, loses to like a purple side B, I think, in some cases as well. So as long as you stay at a spacing where you can react to that, what are they going to do? Yeah, they can throw out the, cl uh, the Mecha Koopa, but you can grab that or shield it. You know, as long as you know how to navigate those different projectiles, it's not that bad. So he's just stuck constantly having to approach. You combo him to all hell. He does have some kill power and his up smash is a solid like startup frame data, but it's never really like threatening as long as you don't let him just hit you with aerial after aerial and get these really weird combos or kind of ledge plays where it's like a soft fair into something else. You should be fine. Just run away, throw shit, make him approach. And now he's gonna be struggling. And his approach option is like a, a worse spin dash. Sure, you can abort, but if he aborts, then nothing happens, you know? And then maybe you can catch his landing with an aerial or a side B or something. So I think it's just really bad for him. Byleth. I'd, I'd put slight winning. Byleth just has a really poor speed and kind of no real projectile that's like a consistent to use option. So I would say that you're going to do a lot of like the runaway and kind of make them play that awkward approach game where they need to approach. Then you can either parry or lag their attacks with your Pikmin. And then you're able to punish. Just make sure when you're shielding something like the Nair, since it has that separate grounded hitbox. So you like Nair in the air. And then when you land, there's an additional hitbox, like kind of like a Mario down air or Falco forward air. As long as you're not getting shield poked or kind of called by that because you're letting go shield too early, it should be fine. Yeah, they can hit you with like the other like spear attacks, like fair and bear. But those aren't a big problem as long as you're kind of respecting the space. Just know what areas you can and can't be around them. You know, don't get greedy off stage and then get up beat and died. Don't go try and shark the ledge or shark the ledge for some reason. And then get caught with like a down smash or something like that. So just respect their certain spacing and then throw stuff. And then when you get purples, and I, I forgot to say this, but pretty much every matchup, when you get purples, you win. In most cases, right? Like get two purples, throw, 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 throw. And then you just, you're going to win. So just wait and like filter your lineup gradually. And then you'll be able to you'll be able to get him. You know, just don't force it. Force him to approach. Let him play your game and like you can get the lineup you want. How's a little more beat Alf? Uh, Alf's just stupid, so I put him in winning. Falcon. Mm, I'd have it even. I think it's just it feels very back and forth. Like you can Falcon's got his combos on you, but Olimar can whistle. I think some of them, at least from a lot of the Falcons I've played, it doesn't like he's got true stuff, but whistle can do a lot for you to land. You kind of both just combo each other whenever you get a hold of each other. It's who's going to get their hitter first. Is he going to hit you with like a nair or a down throw or a raptor boost and something? Or are you going to up smash down tilt, you know, grab him? 
and then it goes back and forth and you get your combos. Uh, with him, you want to stay a lot more gr uh, on stage when he's off stage, unless you're confident you can hit him with like a side B or an aerial, just because like down smash against up B is borderline impossible because the way it snaps the ledge and stuff like that. Be careful when he's in the corner because that Falcon kick is so fast and online. I believe it's unreactable. I don't know off the top of my head, but it's very hard to react to if if at all, right? And that's a kill option up close. So you don't want to just like run up and try and do something and mess it up. Um, same thing with his up B, like you can be careful. It, it, or it can catch you off guard if you're not careful. So kind of keep your space. With a lot of these matchups, you just need to keep your space and kind of react as you can. And then you'll punish them because they'll need to close the distance somehow and punish you. And when you're ready, you can hit them with a transcendent aerial or a space smash attack or purple side B. And then they're going to get knocked back. And it's okay to do that chip damage over and over and over again until you find like a good hit on them, like a back air or an up smash or something like that. I'll, I'll do the Pokemon separately. I think Charizard's slight winning. Yeah, he's a heavy and he's got solid out of frame, out of shield frame data, but he's still at the end of the day like a big heavy. And he doesn't have like he's not the same type of like a Bowser, right? Like you can kind of intercept him. I feel like you can run away from Bowser or from Charizard a little bit easier. You can intercept things like Flare Blitz as long as you don't hit his shield freely. It's not that bad. I mean, it could just be the type of players I'm playing to play both, but it feels a little bit easier to navigate around him. He also dies way easier than Bowser, of course. The weight difference, and I think part of it, even though I am gauging these characters specifically. They're not, they're kind of all tied together, so they're not going to stay Charizard all the time. It's a little bit easier, I find, to intercept his upbeat at the ledge, maybe like a dare or a down smash when he's doing the, uh, the, the ledge snap and stuff. Just, you know, respect his big, like, things, like, you know, the back throw bear mix ups or little things like that where he'll try and catch you in a normal interaction, then all of a sudden kill you with some tip or hit or some crazy rage move. As long as you're ready to, like, DI the things properly, usually DIing away, jumping away, letting yourself react to things, so you need to have that distance between you, right? You're gonna be fine. Just get your purples, do your thing. Reds are really good against them because they don't die to some of his attacks, and you can just kind of keep walling him out. Space death smashes on shield and stuff like that. I'm actually gonna jump over to the rest of the Pokemon. Ivysaur. Yeah, I would honestly put slight winning as well. There's not much here, honestly. I feel like just go for purples ASAP. Purples are gonna beat out uh, Razor Leafs. They're gonna be able to intercept as he jumps because Ivy's not usually gonna ride to an aerial unless it's generally unless it's like a neutral air, but they're not gonna do that unless they're near you. So if they want to space like a bear, they have to ride and then fall generally. And then you can intercept them on your way up because you're trying to keep that distance between you. And then when you get your first hit with like purple, then you can go in and start punishing them. Try and intercept them where they can. F smash and down smash are really good at catching them at the ledge. Yeah, they have some combos and they have some way to punish you. Like bear can be really annoying on shield. Their neutral air can be really good at out of shield to poke you and then put you off stage. And then that's what they have down air and up B and things like that. But as long as the Olimar is doing his job, I think he can navigate it pretty fine. It doesn't feel like bad by any means. The Olimar should be setting the pace of the game kind of saying, okay, I'm either approaching or I'm not approaching. If Ivysaur approaches me, that's good, because then I can punish him when he messes things up, or I can intercept him on his way in, you know? Squirtle. Squirtle. I think it's all. I think they're all in slight winning, honestly. They all have their different things. Like, Squirtle, better frame data, can shield pressure, can pressure your shield a bit better, has, you know, a solid out of shield game, sure, but pairing goes a long way against them, and I know it's kind of hard on Wi-Fi, but I think it does a lot. Even if not that, even if you're not pairing consistently, you just need to hit him like two good combos and he's in kill percent, right? And that is a big difference between him and the others. But as long as you're kind of giving yourself distance, seeing how he's reacting, maybe lagging with Pikmin, anti-airing with your own, you know, yellows are really good for that. Yellow up air, yellow fair, yellow bear. You're just going to stop him, stump him out. Then you can run up, get like a tech chase with a jab or something, put him in a bad spot and kill him. I think his up, he's kind of exploitable. Like if you're really good about your dares or down smashes with yellows, you can punish that there. But even if you don't want to do that, you kind of just want to retreat. He'll probably end up switching off once you get a solid combo to on him because he doesn't want to stay at that 70-80% to kill him. It's so like, yeah, he'll combo you, but have, just having good DI on his combos can cut them really short and minimize most of what you're doing and as long as you're recovering smart against any of these characters like you're not just going high all the time so you can get up you can get water gunned or upbeat by ivy or something like that and you kind of play around the ledge i think they don't handle like horizontal ledge stuff too well squirt a little bit does but you can go a little bit lower for that just be able to navigate them pretty well covering yourself with side bees as you recover is really good if you have purple, throw those out, force them to respond to something, and then come in and recover yourself. But I think they all have their own weakness. Honestly, they all died all Olimar kind of easy, in my opinion. And the things they lack really allow you to kind of exploit it. Like, Charizard doesn't have the best, like, frame bit outside of, like, some out-of-field options. So you can kind of run away from him, and what's he going to press you with, like, an air? Okay, that's fine. Cover it with, like, a side B or something, you know? So it's pretty tame, in my opinion. And I know I'm not going into, like, super in-depth with all these, but I'm trying to give, like, a basic gist for it. 
Let's do Krom. Come on. Slight losing. Normally, this is a matchup I would put in even on Wi-Fi. Or even offline. But Wi-Fi is so frustrating. And he's kind of one of those matchups where you can't react. But he's out there mashing on your shield. He's got a plethora of safe aerials, right? He can mix up how he's doing it, especially on platforms. He's jab and down tilt become a lot more strong on shield because you need to take at least one or two of them sometimes before you're able to really register what's happening. So like, yeah, his jab is not safe, especially when he does another one. But if he jabs you and then you have to react to it and then he does another one, if you try to punish that initial one, it can get really hairy. His up out of shield is fantastic for covering you. And just the fact that he doesn't need, he doesn't have any sour spots. So it's going to be really easy. Any move he clips you with is going to be powerful right so he just needs to hit you with something and then he can run with it he's got really high mobility too so he'll be able to catch up he'll be able to kind of chase you and it can get very dangerous no matter where you're at especially at the ledge because of things like jab back air jab forward air uh, f smash in some cases it's, i wouldn't say there's i'd say olimar does his usual game plan against him honestly purples can really shut Krom down if we able to get an idea of how his jump patterns are as well that can help a lot because he usually likes to run and do some aerial because it's so safe i really recommend paying attention to how they're interacting with platforms because they usually like to get up there and then fall with an aerial I think that'll do a lot of for you. And if you're honestly really on top of your up Bs, you can intercept his up B quite a bit and try and down air and spike it or something, as long as you're really confident about being on top of it. And I think those things help kind of keep it a little bit even. Purple's once again always kind of an equalizer, but since you're still interacting with Krom, it can be dangerous, but at the same time, because you're interacting with him, because he has to fight you and he can't like hard camp you out, I do think it's winnable. And his buttons, while being really, really good, aren't crazy enough right like his frame dead on his up he's not crazy enough to like polarize it like a game and watches could be if like it was frame three with his attacks cloud what a cool moment. cloud honestly i'm gonna put cloud and big losing um i do think it's technically winnable in some ways like if, if the opponent fucks up i think cloud you can be cloud but it's so difficult he has range he has mobility he has kill power he has safeness he has an out of shield game and that's like a perfect storm of frustration against Dolomar in a space where you simply cannot play at the same pace you can't react to things right so it's so frustrating when he backers your shield and you don't have an option when he cross slash mixes up on your shield you don't have an option when you hit his shield even slightly wrong, up B clips you. It's huge. Olimar's hitbox is also huge. So you're just getting nicked by anything. And if, if something just clips you, if it's a nair, an up air, an up tilt, an up B, as long as you're in the air, you're in a bad time. Because now you're going to land on this giant character, huge hitboxes, that is safe. So I honestly think Clouds really shouldn't lose on average. But if they are, it's because they're either getting hard red about the way they're intercepting, or they're getting parried a lot. But it, it's so difficult, because you can't react to things. You can't parry as consistently. The, his buttons just went. And he kills Pikmin real easy. He fares, you shield, can't punish. Your Pikmin's gonna die. Even if you did have the frame data. Even if he did misspace it, right? Purples can make a big difference. And if you're good about it, you can try and intercept his up B. I think that can help some. But you gotta be really good. Because the way they can kind of up B can dodge a lot of attacks or clip you. So you need to be good about doing your down air. But reacting can be tough. And if you go too early, you whiff. And then you... And then you end up reversing the situation because you go past the ledge, lose your advantage state. Now he's on stage again. So it's like you're constantly tiptoeing this like game plan while he's just mashing. He's just like button, 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 button. Doesn't matter where it is, right? He's gonna do it. You attack him, he mashes. He's coming at you, he mashes. So that's why it's so frustrating. Corin. Let's do this. I think no. There's just certain times where they don't die when they should. It's weird. <sighs> Normally offline, I think Olimar wins this slightly. It might be even offline. But, and this is a matchup that I still do need a lot of work in too. Um, just because there's not a lot of competent corns out there, right? So, I, I speak with some things with a little bit of a grain of salt. But I have an idea just from, you know, how things have kind of worked in Smash 4 and what I've played in this game. And just my understanding. I think it's pretty neutral online. Pin's still not as oppressive as it was in past games. So, I think you can deal with it fine. Just respect that mid-range and go a little bit farther out. Just, uh, you know, go a little bit farther than you normally would. Using side B to catch things. Trying to anti-air with those fares and stuff like that. Because they're going to jump at you too. And they're going to want to fall with their fair on their own. With most Fire Emblem characters I found that you got to watch out for the falling up airs. That gets for Krom as well, who we already talked about. When you're under a platform, just be ready for them to fall with an up air. It's going to catch you every time. Olimar's hurtbox is trash. Their hitboxes are massive. So it's you need to be very positionally aware relative to platforms in the stage. 
but, you know, just kind of play it away where you're like, okay, I can react to these things. Maybe you'll whiff your side you'll whiff your aerial, then I can punish your, you know, your shield reflex that you go out for. And then you get a combo with your grab, and then you kind of rinse and repeat. Dare can be a little mm, hard to hit at times, because you can't always react as well online. But I think it can be a great tool to punish their at B. Your dare transcend, it's going to hit them. Even if you don't spike, you can knock them out, and then just constantly, like, gimp them if they don't die from that. But, you know, you do got to watch out. If you're not careful, they will combo you. Falling there, falling fair, falling up air into stuff. Uh, down tilt with stuff. Pin still very strong, even if it's not as oppressive. Just respect their aerials because they're good. And kind of trying to intercept them on their way up for things. Or when they whiff something like a pin. But it's like, corn has got some solid kill power too. And Olimar can be a little easy to kill at times. So you got to be careful of that. And that's why I think it's a little bit even. A lot of it does come down to just being hard to react. And that you got to play at a weird spacing a little bit farther than you normally would just to kind of protect yourself. You'll honestly find that a lot of these characters are just better because if they are, just because you cannot react. Like, I'd like to give a more dynamic explanation, but there simply isn't one. You can't react, so they get away with more shit. And your buttons aren't safe, and they're projectiles and whatever, so they don't have that problem. Falling up airs and Fire Emblem characters are hand in hand, I feel. Daisy. I'm just gonna Daisy instead. Of, actually, I'll just Slight losing. Peach, I would normally put an even because I think you can kind of match her tempo well. And I, but online, you can't. You can't react. You can't parry. The character kind of gets to run a train over you. You can still employ the the more mid range strategies, kind of poking with tipper F smash, especially yellows. Getting purples, you can definitely pressure the character. You can intercept them. You know, you throw a purple, they nair. Great. You throw another purple, they lose. Right? Like they're gonna lose that interaction. It is worse online. I have peaches even offline normally. Or I have peaches, yeah, peaches even offline. So I think you're going to lose it here just because it's so hard to do with all the buttons. I mean, it's still doable. It doesn't feel one sided. You still have to interact with the peach. And if you're in, like, really in the zone, you can intercept her. Even if peach is worse offline, Olimar's still worse offline, in my opinion. But peach can still press her buttons, right? Like, that's the big thing. Olimar can't press his buttons as well as some of these frame data monsters, so you're just going to get some other if you're not careful. Definitely winnable, it's just going to be tough. You just got to be able to keep them out of your face, and that's why I think it can be hard. Dark Pit. Dark Pit. Uh, just kind of underwhelming. I mean, he's got some stuff. His aerials can be annoying. The multi-hits are, are really good for catching Olimar, especially when you're off stage. But I feel like as long as you're good about your recovery and you know how to DI, like, you can get those combos pretty short. Arrows are... Whatever. I think neither pits are really that impactful, so I'm just going to put them in the same spot, really. With them, you just have to not smash attack willy-nilly, and I think that'll do a lot for you. Just because with side B and down B both being reflectors of some sort, you can get caught slipping a lot. But a lot of, like, range side B kind of catching their approach, and then also anti with aerials using down to pop them up. Using your boxing options with jab, that's kind of... Jab is one of his best moves, so it's going to help you open up a lot of characters, but especially ones where you need to be a bit more careful about your smash attacks. You can two-frame their up B really easily, even on Wi-Fi, I think. So I think that helps a lot. Like, yellow down smash eats them up. They die kind of easily. Their kill throw is a little situational, mainly being forward throw. So as long as you're careful around the ledge, you shouldn't die that often. So I think they're just kind of an underwhelming character in, as a whole. And if you can avoid the few things, like Electroshock Arm catching you, for instance, or like, you know, getting like dare up smash, you shouldn't be dying that much. You know, just do your old mark game plan. It's going to be a pain in the ass for him. What is this? Is this dubstep? I don't listen to dubstep. Dark Samus. I'm gonna leave Dark Samus and Samus in the same tier. Honestly, this is a matchup that I have. It's winning for Olimar online or offline, maybe slight winning. But damn, does not being able to react really even the odds. Samus already has a really good out of shield option with that B. So if you're caught slipping on their shield, you're getting upbeat, no doubt, right? Especially on platform stages where they can land earlier and just kind of catch you grab is really annoying to deal with just because there's has so much or so so much range with Olimar's lack of speed it can hard be hard to whiff punish it when you already are reacting a bit slower you know they have their normal projectiles charge shots can be a little bit more frustrating they can end up comboing i think those lend to the character success a little bit more but at the end of the day it is still Olimar, so you're going to block a lot of the projectiles with your own side b's are going to eat it up you know reds are going to tank rocket or missiles yellows are going to tank charge shots um, so you kind of just get your game plan going, get your purples, start pressuring from a distance, then kind of work your way in as you crack them open with that, force them into shield, either break with a down smash or grab them, right? You just need to rinse and repeat, that's a lot of what online is, to get a good opening to really combo them. Just don't be super greedy on Samus' shield because of what be, and just 
do your chip damage over and over again, over again. I think it's fine, but it feels kind of evenish because you have to respect certain options from Samus, and it's really easy to get caught slipping around things like grab with big range, and once Samus puts you in the air, you know, all it takes is one good air, one good back air, you lose your stock. But the same goes to her, too. You know, one good back air, one good F-Smash, character's dead. Did he? Uh, I, I, I want to give the, the slight win to Olimar on this one. I, I know he wins it offline, but to me, just being careful about Banana, knowing, like, when is he going to side B? What, like, paying attention to what general space things he's side B so you can know when to intercept it. Don't be, a lot of, don't be, sorry. A lot of these characters have out of field options that are good. Like Diddy's frame five up smash. However, you can still kind of hit his shield certain ways. He can't do it from behind, right? So that makes a big difference. Have good DI on your combos. So that's going to minimize his combos a lot. You know, you DI down to the right way. You're not going to get down aired. So they have their stuff and it can be hard, a little harder to react, but just be smart about it. Purple's intercepting really well. Fair's fantastic about stopping his monkey flip kick. You know, Pikmin can mess up banana on your own right. There's a banana peel on the floor. You have smash and it's going to go away. There's a banana peel on the ledge and you're off stage. Throw a Pikmin, have a run off and grab it. Little things like that to help kind of even the playing field. You get a banana, you can combo the hell out of Diddy and hit him with some nasty stuff into a, a smash attack. Just be careful around him. Don't mash. His aerials are very good. His tilts are really good. He can kind of outbutt you in that immediate uh, up close game, but when he has to approach and you're able to block his stuff with Pikmin and be careful about it, it can be really hard for him. And I think Olimar just has a way easier time killing than him. And that helps equalize the, the matchup a lot more. I say equalize, but kind of, I guess, give an advantage to Olimar a bit more. DK. Slight winner. DK is just a classic heavy, except unlike Bowser, he kind of lacks the raw speed and the absurd out of field options. And that does a lot for Olimar. He has to approach, you intercept him, he's in the air, you combo the shit out of him. Like, he doesn't have, like, a immediate just respect this option button kind of like bowser's down air so someone to charge already big combo food he can be easier to punish you can hit a shield a little bit more liberally than some of the other heavies just be careful about the bears watch your you know your general percentage relative or, or watch your percentages when you're around platforms so you don't get ding dong you can whistle a lot of those watch out for down bees but just kind of play your game let him kill off your pikmin and then get purples and then go to town on him and then he's gonna get comboed i think the only reason it's not main winning is just because he can be a little aggressive off stage and he's got solid combos with the down B and stuff. His, his cargo throw combos, down tilt kind of forces trips, puts you into a weird tech situation, and it can be kind of oppressive. That would definitely be a winning matchup offline, I think, but online it can be a little bit more frustrating to deal with, and he just kind of hits hard enough where I, I think it gives him enough, but it could be regular winning. It's not like impossible. I'm just giving him the benefit of the doubt. Dr. Mario! Just camp him. Literally just camp him. He's like Mario, but slow. Right, like, let him hit hard, sure. Run away from him. I think, yeah, it can be annoying if Dr. Mario gets on top of you, but it's up to you to not let him. Like, these are the characters. They're, they have other tools. He does. He literally has to run at you and throw a pillar cape. Just no one to back off. No one to respect the nair. No one to respect the down B. Knock him off station with one arrow. He's literally dead. You know? And you can really exploit that just... Don't fight him up close. Don't box him. And I think it's not that big of a deal. As long as you're not hitting the shield stupid, it's not going to be a problem. Pills, you're saying you have a difficult time with those. Yeah, they're going to be a little annoying. Try and block with Pikmin. Maybe run under him as he jumps and throws them. Or jump and kind of match his height and then side B and get some damage, right? Purple's going to be able to intercept those really easily. Just need to force this in between you guys. Be smart about your stage picks. Understand, what do I need to ban? Do I need to ban someone with the walls? So I don't stop getting... Sorry, because I'm getting garage guarded a lot. Do I need to go somewhere a bit bigger? Just a force room between us? Those things make a make a big difference. Duck Hunt. I would have... You know what? No, no I'm going to put this on site winning. I think he doesn't do that much to where it's going to change the matchup too much online to offline, I feel. He's going to throw shit. You're going to throw shit. I think our stuff's just better. Pikmin can explode the can the moment it comes out, especially reds. If it hits it, if it hits that Pikmin and it ticks or anything like that, or it intercepts with it, it explodes. That can blow up right in his face if a Pikmin's latched onto him. Purples can knock out Gunman if they're fresh. You can also knock out Clay Pigeon. You can just combo him decently. His up is kind of susceptible to if he doesn't have a can out. You hit harder than him. Like, Omar has a lot of true combos too. So he's not gonna, he's not going to be able to can out of a lot of things. But you can whistle a good amount of stuff and just... You just get better projectiles for it. As long as you're not getting caught by clay pigeon combos, it's going to be rough for him. I think the only real saving grace not putting him in winning is that he can be frustrating if he gets certain openings on you. It's just, and they're, they will happen. I mean, clay pigeons really get it disrupting you and it like gets shot. Can, one good can on his part can kind of open you up and then you're in the air and then you got to try and land. So he has tools to do it. And he's not like forced to just blindly approach like someone like a, a Bowser Jr. or something where they have this really limited projectile. And I think that helps him a lot. Falco. Come on! Yeah, put it even. Um, honestly, I think the character kind of his frame rate is really good, and he has his combos. 
the, un the unreactability of certain things makes it more difficult. His reflector gets a bit more potent online. Like, yes, it's frame one to begin with, but punishing the lag of it's very frustrating because normally you'd be able to shield it and do something, but it's really easy for him to just spam it twice and then catch you trying to jump because you're too slow. You can't visually react to it and things like that. And I think that lends to it. He's got a lot of different ways to catch you down till up till, you know, near fair. Just, and all he's got to do is get you in the air and then you get a quick combo. And his combos are pretty easy to hit like you had enough thought you're probably gonna combo them with something impactful at the same time olimar also combos him really easily if you're smart about your edge guarding you're gonna hit him very hard at the ledge if he side bees you have smash him or something you know just really punishing him there and he's super light so he can die easy so while he does have his own combos he can kind of force the pace of the game to slow down and you kind of respect certain things with his reflector because it's so difficult to punish online it kind of just poke you it's not like one-sided at you're all i feel game, fox. fox let's go same thing now i i mean these two spaces, compared to something like Wolf, which I'll touch on later, they're just more modest, I feel. Like, Fox has good frame data, you know, it's like the Nair into the jab, he's got back air, he's got his up-tail combos. As long as you're smart about hitting a shield, you're not getting up smashed all the time. It's not as threatening. And his Nair, like, they don't have a projectile per se. Falco more so than Fox, I guess, it's one, but Fox doesn't really have a great projectile to force you to play a certain way. He has a reflector, yes, so you gotta be a little bit careful about throwing out your smash attacks. But it's not, like, so restrictive or so, like, damning the way you play it. So I, I think as long as you're smart about when Fox is approaching, pick your stages smartly so that he's not just like getting free up air strings on something like Battlefield. Pairing can help a lot. Know what he wants to do after his pressure. He'll get his combo, sure. You'll get, it's, it's similar to Falco where you'll get your combos on him. You're going to kill him easily. You're going to edge guard him really easily as long as you're on, on your A game. And the unreactability of things, I don't think comes into play as much because his buttons aren't as like big and oppressive. They're kind of more modest. No, I think it's even offline. But I don't think the online element changes the dynamic of the matchup too much. Whereas something like Wolf, which I'll explain later when I talk about it, does. And that's because of the way his hitboxes work and the other tools he has at his disposal. Like, when Fox combos me, okay. When Wolf combos me, it's a different type of combo. And that's a big distinction to make. Ganon. Uh, actually, online, it's a slight winning. Uh, I mean, it's Ganon. It's really easy to just get caught slipping because you buffered something wrong or you reacted the wrong way and you die. But at the end of the day, you just camp him. Run away, run away, run away, run away. Get purples, then run away and stop him from approaching play a lot of like max range space stuff and the only reason i haven't slight winning is just because he'll hit you sometimes and you'll die and you won't be able to and you'll get like flustered that's the nature of online and he can kind of exploit that but on average just keep your space and poke with shit until he loses greninja i'd say even i think it can be a little annoying at times sure honestly this might be a slight losing but right now i'm gonna put it even he can have some safe buttons with Nair and Fair and stuff like that, and that can be frustrating. And the way he cracks you open with the zone breakers actually can be a bit more difficult to react at times. Down tilt and dash attack, because if you're on point with those, like shielding a dash attack or a down tilt, you're up smashing it, no problem. Or you're back airing it, right? Online, it can be a little bit tougher, and I think that lends to his success a bit. But at the same time, Greninja already has a really bad out of shield game, so you get a little bit more luxury in pressuring him safely, I think, because they won't be able to react as easily. Uh, you can intercept him really well with purples, and then you kind of just kill Greninja dummy easy. Like, he, he dies. If you're smart about his recovery, you can try and intercept it. They can be kind of creative with their up Bs, but, you know, using, like, a solid yellow dare, you're going to cover a lot of that space. So I think it just goes back and forth. He combos you and hits hard. You combo him and hit hard. Big things are just make sure that you're watching your spacing between him and you so you're not getting called by, like, Light Shuriken that are disrupting you. Olimar does body heavies a lot of the time, but online they get a little bit more leeway because it can easier it be, it's easier for them to catch you with stuff randomly and then kind of turn the tides. Hero, I'll put in slight slight winning. I think. I think Hero, he's an RNG monster, right? Like you get the perfect storm of, of uh, your spells, you're you're winning. You're gonna kill him. But I don't think he has the best options to approach. He does have some stuff though. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna put that even. I think if the hero is really good about using things like jab, it's like an up close quarter option to mix you up and kind of catch you trying to jump or trying to active shield too quick. And then it's intercepting your mid range game really well with so like the, the charge side, be the, the medium charge. It's going to be very frustrating. Throw in some mild RNG, like good RNG on the down B and you get a storm of a character that's very difficult to deal with. That being said, I think Olimar does combo him pretty well and he can kind of play far away. And even if he does get bounce, it's not the end of the world. You can still tilt him. You can still do your aerials. Just be careful. Respect your space. Verticality, I think, can help a lot against him. Kind of playing like a 45 degree angle from a distance. Like, so you can approach him. Like, yeah, if you're right on him, he can hit you. It definitely feels very back and forth. Just, it can get a little tipsy if he gets, like, really good RNG. But if you get two purples, he can't really do much about that because he has rather poor frame data and movement speed on average. Ice Climbers. 
lose. I only have Ice Climbers in slight winning instead of winning because I've played some Ice Climbers players who I feel do a really good job of keeping it closer. Like they have really solid combos that can be frustrating to fight, especially when they're using their blizzards, as well as like a good Walden tool and desyncing. But I think that Olimar still can kind of keep them uh, apart rather easily. Like if you get one good hit on them, you're probably going to start a combo, you know? And that can go a long way. Purples can really shut them down. Yellows are really good at doing that as well. And it's just really about not letting them get their game plan going. You just got to be a little bit careful because if they hit you with the right storm, like the right combination of things, they can get really out of hand. But I think on average, they're going to have a hard time getting in as long as you're playing that like mid-range safe spacing game well. Uh, a lot of the tipper F smashes, things like that. Yellows really are your best friend against them because they're so big. They, they Plus the electric property, you can get solid combos on both of them. And then when you get them apart, split them up and then so opposed it's not even an issue for Olimar. Like you just destroy him, what's he gonna do, right? I mean, their recovery is really bad there. Just no one respects certain things. They have solid shield pressure with certain setups too, with like uh, certain aerials into it. I think like fair and stuff, or blizzard can shield break. So just be careful about that. Don't be afraid to maybe incorporate some horizontal mix-ups on like platforms. Just don't sit right above them because their uppers are super good at just sharking with how fast they are when they have both. But on average, I think Olimar should be keeping them out. I don't think online is giving them too much of an advantage, if at all. Alright, who we got next? Ike! Ike, 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 Ike! Uh, even matchup. I don't think he's one of those, like, characters that has good buttons, but it just feels very even, just like how it is offline. You know, you throw your stuff and intercept him and kill him, he hits you with his nair combos, and you don't, you know, you get comboed sometimes, but I think, you know, it's only even really because he can kind of equalize the game rather easy through a couple choice hits, especially with things like up be out of shield. Or if you slightly fuck up, he can catch you because it's so big and hits very hard. But I think with Ike, it doesn't feel super lopsided. Like it's just a good even matchup, even with uh, the changes of the character in the past. He doesn't ha he doesn't oppress you, and it'd be like with anything except like Nair, maybe the occasional tilt has like a good safe button, and when he's Nair, he has to fall with it. So you just jump and hit him. It's really straightforward to be honest. Just be careful with the ledge, and you know the better player is probably gonna win in that case. Once again, purples just will do a lot of your problem solving for you. Cineroar. This online is even. Definitely. Uh, online, reacting to side B is an absolute nightmare. Side B super hard to react to, and that move will kill you early, especially with revenge on down Bs, which give him crazy multipliers since it's been buffed and all that. Neutral B also really can just get off the option. It can be difficult to... No, the reason I'm saying it doesn't online is because it can be harder to react to shit, and he just hits like a truck. I mean, it might, you could argue, probably slight winning, but from my experience, it's just very frustrating, and it's easy to, like, die. You just die randomly in that matchup because you slip up and then he just kept doing the same thing. His aerials are very hard to punish when you can't react. Punishing an enemy that already has no lag is difficult offline as is. So it just, it's it's very glass cannon -y. He hits like a truck, you hit like a truck. Who's going to die first? Offline, you run away, you can react to things a lot better, you can parry more consistently, you can deal with the side B no problem. Online, you can't do a lot of that. So he hits you way more than he normally would. That's a slight win. This is honestly not very different than offline. Maybe it's like 60-40 offline. What? The Incineroar? Inkling? Honestly, yeah, like I said, it's not too different from offline. Like, you might get hit by Roller every now and then a bit more. But you just kind of keep the character out. They don't have a great approach option outside of, like, Bear. And you just either intercept them or run away. You can punish their ledge recovery pretty good. Like, you can hit their two-frame. Snap pretty decently with down tilt and down smash. I'm just keeping away purple shut them down. They don't have a great way to deal with them. They don't even have a great way to deal with Pikmin, to be honest. Their hitboxes aren't the best for that. F smash will trade or beat roller oftentimes. So it's just the character's a little underwhelming. You know, you can whistle up though up airs in a lot of cases. And they're just gonna have a hard time killing you, I think, outside of like rollers, as long as you're smart about your recovery and you're not gonna have a hard time killing them at all. And you'll probably get more damage aside from their occasional combos. Just be careful with their neutral B. If they wanna spam neutral B and kind of like awkwardly disrupt you, just run away and throw stuff. Isabel, definitely a winning matchup. I think, I'll, honestly, more recently, I feel like Isabel might actually be the worst character in the game. She's got some annoying stuff, sure, like her side B or her air, fair and bear can be annoying, her Lloyd Rocket, her fishing pole can be annoying, but it just feels like a lot of annoying stuff. If you handle it well, it can be not that bad, right? Like your aerials can intercept hers, uh, like her turn up stuff. She can pocket side B, yes, but when she throws it, it maintains like a higher arc. Because she's, you know, the way she throws it. So it's really easy to dodge it if you're up close. So it's not a big problem. You can punish her recovery decently. You kill her easily. She has, like, RA shield pressure with things like Nair and stuff. But just get your chip damage. And go for your purples. And then beat the hell out of her. Like, she can't do much about it.
Just don't be dumb and really abuse your shield. She can't do that much about shield, and that's going to be a big thing. F-Smash will destroy Lloyd Rocket in the, when it's buried in the ground. So you can just walk up and F-Smash it, hit her potentially, destroy it. You don't have to worry about that, and just play it lame and punish her for lacking tools. Joker! That's it's either. educational Actually, guidance. That's slight winning. Online, I think it's slight winning because Joker's already kind of like meh online. Like, it's hard to really perform well with him. And I haven't really fought any Jokers that have really been pushing the boundaries. I already think it's an even matchup offline. But online, he doesn't have like the stupid, crazy frame data to be punishing all the time. He's kind of a bit more modest with things that comes out of Shield game and the way he pressures Shield. So, you and he has to go for a lot of specific stuff, especially if he doesn't have Arsene to get his hits, I feel. And it's just really easy to just punish him, kill him super easily. He'll just still do his normal game, sure, but. It's not that menacing. Maybe it could be worse. Maybe even a slight losing. If there's a Joker who's very, very committed to, like, bullet camping the whole game on certain stages. But I have yet to encounter that. So I'm not going to assume that specifically because I haven't seen someone play like that with him online. So I think Olimarch kind of outclasses him in a lot of ways. And just once again, if he has a reflector, don't be stupid about smash attacks and you'll be fine. Jigglypuff. <laughs> Base Mage has honestly shown me that... Even though I still think if I learn that matchup a little bit better, it's going to be easier. It's, I think it's not totally winning. Pup just has fantastic hitboxes that can kind of force you to respect certain things. You kind of have to play in a way where it's like, let me run away, let me run away, let me sit center stage and then wait for you to commit something and then punish you. But when you do that and when you do your game plan right, the character takes a lot of damage. You're able to intercept her and you kill her very easily. It's just you're kind of forced into playing a certain way or else it can get really out of hand fast. But even then the character still has solid uh, edge guarding with fair, bear, nair. Uh, and they just linger, they can hit you off stage really easily, so you can die, has rest combos. You can whistle some of them, sure, but things like dare rest, I'm 99% sure you can't whistle. So you can't die sometimes, and that helps kind of keep it a bit equal, and the character's high air mobility, I think, lends to the ability to keep up even somewhat, and just make it not too, too bad. Alright, up next we got Ken. Come on. I'm ready for you. I honestly don't think Ken's that bad. Oh, yeah, like... I I, you know, I do complain about Shoto's online, but I think that's just frustration with how they function as characters in general and it being a little bit more annoying online. But he, like, Shoto's, especially Ryu and Ken, I think, exemplify the stay mid-range and just poke strategy. Don't approach. Don't get cheeky. Throw your stuff. Poke them with, like, tip raft smash and all that. They want to come in. You can anti-air or something, or when you see an opening, you go in and punish them. But you just play that distance game. You force them into your game. You know, and that's going to be hard for them. It's just when they get close, they're all up there framed it and you all up in your head, punching you in the head. You know, you're dying because their fist is on fire now, but they got to get there. Sure. Side B. Side B. The kick. I can't remember what it's called. Yeah. That can be kind of annoying because it can kind of just invincibility through things. But you apparently, it's the, I've been told it's like safe. Uh, Kins is like unsafe on hit at certain percent. So if you die out, then you can hit them. You can still anti-air them above. You can punish their recovery. Ken's uh, up B is kind of inconsistent. If you SDI in, you can sometimes pop out when he's going at you. So just be good about that stuff. Understand your 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 character-specific things. You need to know how to DI things properly. And you can help yourself a little bit longer. Just don't get greedy. Don't try and outbox these characters. They are just built for that. You're not. Play your long game. Abuse your distance. And you can get a lot of chip damage. And then once you get your purple, you hit them once. You 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 know you put them in a tech chip situation. The next thing you know, you're cracking open a cold one of the girls. And they're dead. The same is going to go for Kin or Ryu too. I'm on it. Like they have differences, sure, but it's a pretty much the same strategy. So I'm just going to put him here too. <laughs> DDD. That's going to be a full winning matchup for Prolomar. Like I've played some DDDs recently, you know, on stream and stuff like that, and they do well. But I think there's an element of like they just know what they're doing there. The character is just rather limited. He he's like one of the easiest to hit heavies, and he kind of lacks the speed like some of the other ones to help kind of keep it a bit more even. And as long as you're smart about his inhale and Gordo, you're just going to punish him just as much as he's punishing you. If he inhales a smash attack or like a Pikmin laying on the ground, he has a ton of lag. And he doesn't spit it back out, so you run up and you hit him again. You can hit Gordo back. You know, he shoots one out, then you side B. It's going to hit the Gordo, and it's going to hit him before he can do anything sometimes. So a lot of different ways to mess him up. Just respect his aerials, know how to DI the down throw so you're not getting up aired early. Kind of respect the ledge because he can shark it very well with his up air. And just be mindful of where he's throwing Gordo, and it's, it's really not going to be that bad. K rule. It's honestly really similar. Yeah, crown. He can throw crown, but it's whatever. Jump over it, and then if you grab him, even if crown's coming back, you just have to do a down throw or any throw, and you're gonna get the armor. You're gonna get past it. You're gonna get your free damage. He's huge combo food. If he wants to nair on you, run away. 
Like, if you they want to do that super safe aerial stuff, you just run away, and then now he's back in a weird spot. And for every crown he's throwing, you're throwing more Pikmin, probably. You're getting more chip damage. Oh, he's killing Pikmin? Cool, now you're getting purples. And now you're going to go actually up there and fight him, and you're going to start trashing him. His out of shield game is not very good. So you can kind of just beat him up, break his shield, punish him with purples, whatever, and just rinse and repeat to get him off stage, or you catch him with a straight hit. And even when he's off stage, yeah, his up E is hard to punish, so you don't always have to go for it. But if you're feeling confident, go out there with a dare. Yellow dare especially is pretty consistent at, at least trading. So you just need to do it a couple times so you can die. Kirby! Hi. But that in slight winning. Kirby just suffers from like lack of speed, so it can make approaching tough. The character has solid frame data, especially up close. You know, a lot of good multi-hits, a frame 2 jab, a tilt that can trip you, ways to confirm to the smash attacks, they, you know, safe aerials. But it's like, how's Kirby getting to you, right? It's the same thing, like, if Kirby gets your power, your copy ability, yeah, it's annoying, but there are some downsides to that, you know? You can only do three in a row before there's lag. You can't mm, use it in the air. They each in maintain their individual arc, so it'll go over you and things like that. So there are little bits of counterplay you have to that, but it's really just, like, force Kirby to approach. Run away. It's like Dr. Mario, except the only reason I have Kirby closer is because I think, one, the copy ability can help equalize it if they do get it, and obviously you're going to have to interact with Kirby. Two, you can't gimp Kirby as easily because of the multiple jumps, although the up B is kind of easy to dare if you're good about it. And then I think the dash tag's a good zone breaker, and then just Kirby's, in my opinion, have a tin... A tendency to get in easier they have a good multi-hit uh with dare to approach and they're super safe on shield and it just feels like they're a smidge better at getting in on you but at the end of the day they're still gonna have trouble getting in there and they're gonna die really easily so as long as you're able to punish them as they get in and kind of get your free chip damage they're gonna be dying a lot easier than you are just be really good about your di so you can get out of the the down air combos easier or get farther away even if you don't always avoid something just make your di needs to be on point link huh? i'd say even he just He's really simple. He just kind of mashes Nair on your shield. He throws boomerang at certain distances, which can catch, catch you sometimes. And then he hits you with random aerials and or tilts and you die. Be smart. If you hit a shield the wrong way, you're going to get upbeat and you can die there. But in that same vein, he's got to approach you. And sure, he has boomerang or he has a bomb, but you're getting a lot of chip damage there. If you're hitting his shield wisely, you know, it's not always going to be punishable with upbeat because your moves are just going to be that fast. Purples can kind of help create a dynamic form that's very frustrating to try and punish because he doesn't know when the pressure's going to stop. And it just feels very back and forth. He hits hard, you hit hard. Respect him at the ledge because he has things like drop down rising fair. Respect punishing his upbeat. I honestly wouldn't even recommend going for it unless you're very, very confident because it's so big and he reverses it, it can scoop you, kill you like 70, 80. But on the stage, you throw stuff and you're getting chip damage. Most of these characters, you know, it's kind of a curse and a weakness because yes, you can't react to things, sure. So playing up close is hard, but when they're playing far away, like it's easier just to throw things because when they approach, when anyone approaches, it can be tough online, even if your character has a bit more luxury. But I think you just want to exploit that and force him into a spot where he has to approach. Sure, Nair isn't safe by itself, but what's he doing after that? You know, there might be an opening for you. Yeah, most links are masters, which they should, to be fair. Little Max. Normally, I put this in winning, but we we all know Little Max one of those characters where there's a really simple game plan, really easy way to kill him, but you fuck up and you're dead. You slightly off, you're dead. You oopsied a little too hard, KO punch. You know, sure you can knock him off. Sure you can, you know, kind of play that safe poking game, keeping it safe, getting your combo, rinse and repeat edge guard him with like a down smash or an f smash or a fair at the ledge or something like that or a dare but he has just enough of a wow factor in him that if you're not careful you'll die but at the end of the day still little max as long as you respect certain things his tilts are not safe on shield so even though you can't always react well as long as you're kind of prepared for them you can you can punish and then you just put him in a bad spot and then you exploit the fact that it's little max so yeah that's just little max just kind of bad <laughs> lucario I think the character is very lackluster. He can get dangerous if you don't end up killing him, you know, because Aura can kill anyone matter, at least especially the percent of all my racks up damage quick. That being said, his approach options would be kind of bad, especially when he doesn't have crazy Aura. So he's going to have to like fall on you with like a Nair or something like that, and then you just retreat, get your side B damage, get a purple side B or intercept him with like an aerial or a smash, then open him up for a combo, then knock him off stage, and then most of your attacks hit hard too so you can kill him somewhat easy uh, unless they're really good about their up b you can intercept him really well with down smash especially if he goes to the ledge if he goes above or tries to land on you up smash or kill him you can block where his fear is really I, the only reason i'm in slight winning is like he has some safe frame data his down b can be kind of scary because uh, it teleports it fast and it kills which can make it kind of hard to deal with online because you can't react and the fact that or it will blow anyone up given the percent but i think on average he's gonna have a harder time dealing with you than you him he's gonna have to play your game more which is gonna lead to more interactions where you're kind of just out, able to outclass him who we got next lucas honestly slight winning it's weird because 
I don't get it. Lucas has all these buttons, all this frame data, and then he just doesn't do anything with it. I don't get it. He has a Zare, a frame, I think, two jab, mad safe aerials, PK fire, and it's just the character doesn't do anything. Like, you can, you're going to play a who can throw more things game with him, except you have the benefit of your reds will tank PK fires and not die. Like, if you put a red on front of him, like latch it onto the front of him and he PK fires and it hits and it's in the right spot, it just explodes right there. Your Pikmin doesn't die. So you can get chip damage there and then you just get your openings that way. Like he commits to something, you maybe run and parry and then you punish him, open him up and then rinse and repeat. You don't got to get crazy off stage because recovery is good. Be careful. I think his aerials can be kind of frustrating and he can be difficult around the edge because that B can kind of keep knocking you out and burn your up B fuel. Down smash is a great two frame option. PK freeze always a, a threat if you're not careful. But on average, I think like he doesn't have best speed, so him getting on top of you can be a little tough. But if he does it, it's not too bad. But I think on average, Olimar's going to be kind of outclassing him. Just respect his frame data, no one to shield, and then block his projectiles as you go and get your chip damage, and then you should win the war gradually. That's exactly it, Brian. Like he should be good, but he's not. Lucas has combos, but they're not. I don't know. They're just kind of underwhelming to me. The future is not written. Lucina. Slight losing. Your buttons are good. That's it. Like, she just has solid mobility mixed with very strong buttons. And the fact that it's harder to react to things than this, I think, is going to make it more difficult. I have My opinions have changed on her in an offline setting, which I'm going to save for a future date to really get into. But online, I think it's just like, it's really easy to get caught slipping and die. You can't hit her shield. They're going to upbeat you. Like, her upbeat's fast, too. So they can even be a little slower on their punishes sometimes. Or on their reactions sometimes and then hit you. And it's just... It's kind of, it's it's really much a lot like Krom, except instead of being speed, they're kind of floaty, but their buttons are still absurd. And their uppies, out of, their out of shield game is even better. And that is way... It's like two and a half times faster. And that makes a big difference. So now, at least with Krom, you can hit him some. You just should never hit Lucina's shield. Or, like, very sparingly, or unless you really know what you're doing about it with, like, setting up, like, layer pressure with purples and stuff. So not the end of the world. She doesn't have the best speed. So because of that, and her buttons are a little weirder, she can't always, like, rush you down and punish you a lot. So that gives you some leeway to kind of keep her out, get your Pikmin and stuff that you need. Whereas, like, Krom has that, but he's also susceptible to be gimped. Or he has other issues. I think she's very well-rounded and she does win, but it's not, like, so oppressive that you'll just... You shouldn't win someone like a Cloud who just kind of has a lot, everything he needs. I have Luigi... Ugh, that hurt. I have Luigi in slight winning. Camp him. Camp, 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 camp. Run the fuck away. Get your purples. Beat him. He's super deadly up close. Crazy frame data, great out of shield, zero to death combo, so you need to platform camp at low percents, ban FD, but don't interact with him. What's he gonna do? He's gonna have to approach, he's slow. Sure, he has Zare, sure he has like dash attack, which are both great, but just and catching you with those isn't gonna kill you most of the time. Maybe Zare and something, but use your Pikmin to intercept as he's coming in, so at least you're trading or you're doing something to interact with him. Fares are great, you know, way to be like, get off of me when he approaches with something, space staff smashes, then you get the purples. He's going to kill your Pikmin when you latch them. You're going to get purples. And then you can change the dynamic. You can play a bit more. Let me poke the bear, so to speak. Let me see what I can do. Let me purple side being to fair, right? Catch him off guard. You can fair his shield with the purple. He's not that fast. So if the dynamic will change. You get the lineup you want. But at the end of the day, it's just like run away, run away, run away. Even when you get purples, run away, run away, run away. He's going to have to approach. I think the only saving grace is that he hits like a truck. He has great combos. And if you slip up, he can kill you with a down B if you're too greedy or a or a grab combo or something like that. You can also fuck up his recovery if you like snipe his uh, side B with a Pikmin in the right spot. It'll just hit it and he'll go nowhere. And that can be an instant death. Mario, Nixon it's real simple. Goal. Frame data monster. Amazing out of shield game. Kind of like Peach. What do you do? He's going to mash on you. You can't do anything about it. You can't react to that stuff. And he's just going to get benefit of the doubt with it. And unlike someone like a Shoto, where they also have really good boxing frame data, or like Luigi, he's got mobility. Even if it's not crazy fast, he's fast enough for it to matter. And I think that lends a lot to him. Plus, his cape can be annoying. Flood can catch you off guard. Those are great ways to just annoy you. Fireballs can be annoying to deal with. Similar to, like, T-Jolt, which I'll touch down later for peak, the, the electric rats. And they just open you up, and it's very simple to be like, I hate you with an air, I hate you with a bear. Let's go for a ride. And just the fact that you can't really fight it in a very precise manner lends to his success. Worth. Even. I'm honestly, it's it's pretty much a carbon copy of Lucina, except I, the only reason I have it is even is he's going to have a much harder time killing you, which means, on average, of course, which means you get a little bit more leeway to play your game, and that does do a lot of favors. Like, if they're not killing till way later, you're getting rage, you're not dying, more opportunities for you to win. It's just the the increased difficulty of killing is going to just knock them down into a more even gameplay experience. Oh, Mega Man. Even. It honestly feels very similar to online or offline in that you kind of just both throw stuff at each other. You, you know, he's going to try and intercept you with 
the pellets or metal blade or crash bomb or leaf shield one of those random things that like kind of open you up and you're just going to be throwing stuff getting your chip damage trying to intercept him honestly i would say you need to all right let's try that again mega man even you throw stuff he throws stuff he wants to disrupt you a lot with his uh his projectiles pellets metal blade crash bomb or whatever it is you're going to get a lot of you're going to get a lot of chip damage from your stuff purples are a great way to open them up and kind of beat out some of his projectiles like metal blade and stuff honestly it's weird because your close quarter combat game i feel is better than his you have jab you have down tilt you can kind of open them up for combos really well up close but his out of shield game is better because his up smash i believe is eight followers or <laughs> so you gotta be careful by hitting a shield but when you hit him he's that he's in that perfect combo food weight so it's like a balancing act of like are you able to navigate around his projectiles get some damage with your pikmin kind of intercept him play back and forth and then get in a combo and then kill him or is he going to disrupt 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 and then he's going to eventually catch you with something because he knocked you up in the air with a projectile and it just goes back and forth until when you die so it's very even feeling and i don't think the online gameplay changes that that much i'm <laughs> just give me a second metadata i think even just because it kind of is similar to the Mega Man game, except he's going to look for getting you in the air or off stage and then either comping you or edgeguarding you hard with things like back air and air and stuff. And I think he gets a little bit of a benefit in that he can, it can be harder to react to things like dash attack or dimensional cape or stuff like that online. And that can lead to him being a bit better in the matchup. But Olmar can keep him out well. F smash is great for clanking with dash attack, you know, keep yourself grounded because he's going to have to approach a certain way, assuming he's not like just dare camping you with a lead but they have a good lead to do that you know intercept him there purple side is really good and then you can kind of crack him up and he doesn't really have the best boxing options either it's got like a jab which he'll just kind of throw out maybe a down tilt but your jab's really good for opening him up he's at that weird weight too where tech chasing is really uh comfortable on him so it's just another one of those glass candy ones it's just be careful you know be mindful of your spacing so that you're ready to be able to react to dash attack or down b don't be throwing out attacks just willy-nilly just because you think you're safe because if you play Olimar, you know that it's things can have a deceptive amount of lag if you're missing with them. On Wi-Fi, it can be very easy to get punished. So just be mindful of that. You know, use your aerials to beat them where you can. In really every matchup, I will always recommend yellows and purples. Yellows are so good at outranging people, especially with those aerials. Tip wrap, smash, things like that. Just crack them open for a combo, do something, stop them, and then you can kind of push your advantage state from there. And purples are fucking broken. You throw them, people lose. I mean, there's nothing more to it. How many Nacho Bell Grandes have been like man? I wonder how many it does have. It's three whole Nacho Bell Grandes worth of in lag. But <laughs> what do you want from me? I've been doing this for 11 and a half hours. Me too. Really easy to kill, really easy to hit. Honestly, you could argue potentially that this is in a slight winning category. Me too. Easy to kill, easy to hit. His, his model's kind of trash because he's trash. Only saving grace that I think keeps it even, and it's very, like, simple is just side b is an absolute nightmare to deal with it lasts forever it's a reflector it's a command grab it does it all you know he's still got his other stuff he can intercept with dash attack he's got shadow ball stuff fares really good he can catch you with like the back air and up air and stuff kind of juggle you and i think normally it's not that bad but the side b kind of forces you to play in a really frustrating slow paced way that can give him more opportunities to play that being said if you touch him he'll die he just poof, god it's so easy to kill him just be careful around the ledge he can wall jump into bear he can rising up air rising bear things like that if you're too greedy with your smashes and side bees you get side beat you will get re they'll get reflected and you'll get hit um, so you just have to give him a certain level of respect online because you can't always react that well and it keeps it a bit closer than it normally would be you brawler poor man's mario that's what it is you just camp him he can't approach you just camp the fuck out of him like to put it bluntly i'm not going to go back and like give any in-depth explanation of characters right now because it's kind of tired but there will be a youtube video right touchdown in each one with like timestamps of course if you want to go back and hear more detailed explanation but at its core you camp him and he can approach me brawler he kind of lacks the real oppressive power of mario like he has similar moves in some ways in solid frame data but he can't like stay on you as well his specials are a bit more team like yeah he's got some cheesy stuff at times but just know what you're fighting you know ask your me brawler main what specials are you using i know how those work let me play around them. You know, they got some nonsense spike stuff. You don't go near the ledge. They have a command grab. You play farther back so you can treat it like Incineroar. Except you won't die to it, thankfully. And just... Oh, I'm sorry. That's the club. 
you just kind of rinse and repeat and keep him out. He's like a regular boxer. Nothing super crazy about him. And I think he's got some stuff yet and he can hit kind of hard. But there's nothing that's giving him a distinct advantage. And I think on average, he's going to have a harder time getting in on Olimar and staying in on him. And Olimar's going to have an easier time just hitting harder. So it's going to give him the advantage enough to edge it out over him. Me Swordsman, on the other hand. It pains me to put him here. But I think online, it's very, very frustrating to deal with. Offline, different story. Online, if they're if they're running the, like the chakram, the tornado, and the reflector with the hero spin, it's just obnoxious. You know they're gonna spam tornado. It's transcendent. It's gonna kill all your Pikmin. It's gonna combo at certain spacings. They have a reflector. Chakram can be annoying because it's fast. It can mix you up and like catch you off guard if you're not reacting perfectly. If you're at a bad spacing, you know you can still mess him up. But just the nature of online can make it a bit more frustrating to deal with certain interactions. So you have to play in a really lame, campy way. Try and get your openings where you can. If you shield the tornado up close, I believe you can punish it. Just be careful with using Pikmin attack because it lingers. So if you also try to shield or something too quickly, it'll kill it. But you do have some options there. Play around with it. You got to get more comfortable there. But it's not like unwinnable by any means. It's just he's going to have a bit of an easier time killing you, I think, and disabling a lot of your hitboxes. But I think that's why he has an edge here. Just because it's so difficult to consistently deal with it online. Me Gunner. Oh, you know what? <laughs> Me Gunner. This is a great example. Uh, I'm going to make an example of the person I played the other day. This character just, you have tricks, sure, but you lack the ability to really engage with the opponent up close. Like, you're not like a Samus, I feel, where you can kind of get in easily. And you have your projectiles, but what happens when I start camping you? Like, sure, you can shoot them, but I find, from my experience, of course, that Gunner's projectiles can be very linear or kind of, like, they only cover certain areas. And when you add platforms or something into the mix, it can make it a bit less effective. So you just run away and make them play your game. And when you make them approach, they struggle. And then you try to rinse and repeat to put them in an uncomfortable spot until they end up losing. Similar to like the Mii Brawler. They're kind of lacking what maybe their more quote unquote similar counterpart, i.e. Samus, although obviously they're different, has. Just know their tools and understand how their specials work. And you should be fine. I don't know who you're talking about. All right. Min Min. This is a matchup I need to play more. I'm, I've am i heard people think it's Olimar win or Olimar loses. I don't believe that. I've played it some, and there's a lot I have to learn still on really the finer details of how to navigate the arms. But I think there are ways to get around them, and that makes me want to put it in even, kind of out of like a good faith thing, because I know there's more work to be done there. And I know that there is ways to get around it. And she has good buttons, sure, but she also lacks kind of like more traditional buttons because she relies off the arms. And you can block the arms with Pikmin. If you thought an F smash or something and they're using certain arms, it just like blocks it. And then you can go punish. Or your F smash can't even go through their arms in some cases. On top of the chip damage, like, yeah, they have the F smash reflector. But just kind of respect your space like right above them and you should be fine. Don't hit their shield willy-nilly. And just kind of rinse and repeat. And you're both going to be throwing stuff at each other the whole game. And it's just like someone's going to die randomly. Or randomly, I guess. But it's not like... It doesn't feel super one-sided right now. I definitely want to do more experience in it, but it's hard to find very competent Minmin players who also understand Olimar well. Uh, the bus kind of the one that comes to mind for that. But right now, it definitely feels like it's not super one-sided. And I'm going to stand by that statement, just because neither character oppresses the other one so bad they can't do anything. Game and watch. Even. It honestly doesn't feel too different from when you fight him. The way he approaches and things like that, I feel like it's going to be... You're going to be able to intercept it no matter what, or you're going to be able to deal with it just like how you would offline. He has buttons... Respect him, retreat if you need to. Don't hit his shield foolishly. He'll punish you every time with that B if you're not, like, super well-spaced on a few options. You know, just, it's it's back and forth. He's got his combos and his up B stuff, and he can kind of kill you somewhat easily with down smash and up smash and up smash. You can kill him dummy easy, super light. You just have to know how to play your game, you know, intercepting him, depending on what area he's using. If he's using a fair, you swing, at him if he, you swing at him. If he's using a bear, you don't, right? And then you just rinse and repeat, get your chip damage. Win. Nothing crazy. Ness. Okay. I think it's even online. Normally you can deal with him, but I think the way he can kind of mix up his movement with double jump cancel things like PK fire, Psy Magnet stuff, just generally good mobility and large hitboxes, fair bear, dash attack. It's a bit easier for him to intercept you than he normally would have a time doing, and that can make it frustrating. That being said, for everything he does have, you still have your Olimar stuff. You can intercept his projectiles, you know, with your own stuff. Reds are going to go through PK fire and stop it. You have disjointed sword-like aerials too, so you can stop him there. Just be smart about shielding. If you're really cheeky, you can go off stage and really mess with this up. You have a plethora of different ways to do it. Whether you have the ledge punishing it or just actually going off stage and doing something or putting something out there. Um, just be careful with frame beta. Don't hit his shield willy-nilly. He will punish you. You know, respect that he's probably going to do two to three aerials per air time. Hold shield when you need to. And don't let him exercise more privilege than he deserves. And it should all work out.
as long as you're able to distinguish properly when to hold shield or not, and you both hit very hard. The, like a lot of these characters, you're kind of, I'll kill you, you kill me, but there's nothing that's tipping the scales. Super one-sided, I feel, as long as you kind of understand what's there. It's just in an online space where normally I feel like Olimar could win. It's a little bit harder to react to things, and that gives him a bit more of an edge to help equalize the gameplay. Pac-Man! I think, ideally, the way Pac-Man needs to play is, like, really annoying, catching a lot of items, using a lot of mix-ups with his, his item throw and Hydra and stuff. Olimar needs to play very reactionary, because you can't really hit Pac-Man's shield freely. He'll narrow out a shield. You gotta be careful near the ledge. He has, like, Rising Fair and stuff. Just really solid, quick aerials. But you can really mess him up if you intercept his projectiles, if you beat his Hydra. You know, you can up air with a purple and it goes back at him in the air. You can smash them, and then that creates a different type of shield gameplay dynamic. Just knowing how to navigate it. And it kind of turns into you just both throw stuff. And if you hit a shield, he's gonna hit you. If he hits your shield, you might not always get a punish, but you're going to be able to throw out a lot more grounded moves that can open him up and kill him very easily. So it's not too crazy. Just play a bit reactionary. Give yourself some distance to react to what he does at times or when he approaches. And, you know, it, it shouldn't be that bad. I think the only reason it really stays even instead of like an Olimar winning is that he can force the game to play in a way that's very specific to his strategy. Like you have to approach a certain way or you have to always deal with certain items. And those will force you into certain spots that kind of controls the pace to a degree. Palutena ready when you are even olimar does get worse online yes but honestly i'm gonna finish this we're we're finishing this tonight palu i know in the past i said palu wins offline i've changed my opinion i very much feel this to be an even matchup even online she's so tame compared to a lot of the top tiers i feel yeah she has dash tech yeah she has bear yeah she has fair and her projectiles but they're not as long as you kind of follow the, the precedent I was setting earlier, where it's like you take your time, you play slow, you throw your projectiles, you force them to kind of play your game, you give yourself space to react, you can deal with a lot of things. Purple shuts stuff down. Sure, she has her good buttons, and that helps keep her relevant, but there's nothing that she's mashing on you all the time that's winning. It's not like these characters down here who are, like, constantly pressuring you. Well, he kind of just invalidates some of the stuff you do and force you to play a certain way. These characters constantly pressure you in a really frustrating way. And there's only so much you can do about it. Whereas Pally can't do that. Her buttons are great when they do them, but she doesn't do them as much. And I think that's an important distinction to make. Her up, She also doesn't have an oppressive out of shield game like a lot of those characters. And I think that just lets you play a much more even back and forth game of I'll throw my stuff and get my damage on her and kill her easily. Because remember, Olimar kills everyone pretty easily. But you're not, you're not dying like randomly to her. It's very straightforward. And things like, you, you'll see when like a, an explosive flame's coming. So it just feels very even in that regard. This Pichu loses. I don't think it's like crazy lose. I think it's like a slight loss. The character has great frame data. It's hard, solid mobility, but doesn't always have the best approach option. Literally explodes if you look at him the wrong way. Thankfully, Quick Attack not having a hitbox means you're going to probably have to approach with something modest. Maybe you T-Jolt, sure, but you're also damaging yourself, so you get damage on the character really easily between that and chip damage. Know when to shield, know how to DI things properly, that'll get you a long way. Whistle can help too. And just, as long as you're keeping Pichu approaching and dealing with it properly, they're probably going to be in a bad spot. And then you're going to intercept them, and you're going to hit them, and they're going to die. It's only saving grace, really, is that if the character touches you, it gets kind of dangerous, but, you know, that's a lot of characters. Pikachu, slight losing. I think just, it's like, what if you took Pichu and made its hit buttons better, and it didn't do damage to itself? And it had an approach option with quick attack. And it there's nothing bad about this character, really. I think the only reason it's not in like the big losing category is because it's not as crazy oppressive. It's kind of like a Mario or a Lucina or a Peach, where it's like buttons, buttons, buttons. But you can get out of it, you know? Good SDI can help minimize a lot of those combos on Nair, on up air, on up tilt, on back air. You'll get hit by stuff, sure. But it's not like the end of the world if you do it. Just understand what you can and can't punish on shield. Sure, it's hard, but you can do it. Intercepting things, getting an idea of where they're going to quick attack to. Can, you know, if you can parry it, you can potentially punish. You can down tilt, you can intercept it. And just playing in a way, like, run away, throw a Pikmin, make them deal with them. And then when they deal with them, you can get your punish. Or you can get a lineup that's going to let you punish these things. But I think on average, Pikachu's going to have a better time in it. Because you can't really hit the character's shield too easily. And just the, the aerials on the character are crazy. They're easy to throw, you know throw out you run off stage without a bear if it hits cool if not cool nothing happens you know so just an easier time pikachu gets to throw out a lot for very little risk i will take this opinion my deathbed plant sucks olimar does not lose to him character sure like patui is annoying and it can fuck you up if you're not careful but 
handle it right. Don't go hit, you know, plant willy-nilly. Don't understand how to interact with your Pikmin, how it's going to linger there, and then just camp them out. What, are they going to throw a Poison Cloud? Cool. Grab them. So Poison Cloud will stop Pikmin, sure. Like if you side B or your aerial, because it can hit them and it can kill them. But you can just run through and grab it if you're close to them. And if you're not close to them, then let them just do whatever they want. And they're going to get close to you, and they're going to try and do something, you know? And that's, that's when you punish them. Off stage, characters got potentially the worst hurt box when recovering like to down smash it's so easy to down smash since up b it's stupid so you just the character dies easy mobility's not the best aerials hitboxes aren't the best so kind of respect things at a, at a modest spacing between you guys when you see an opening from it doing one of its many weird laggy options go punish it rinse and repeat till it dies once you get it off stage it's really easy to punish it with it's up b being so bad the only saving grace if any is that just Sure, it can hit hard with some stuff, and its less trapping can be scary, but remember, Poison Cloud doesn't do any knockback. Let it do its damage. Like, if it's that or Patui, take Poison Cloud every day of the week. I'm just gonna put PT here, it doesn't really matter, because I already have the other three there. It's no. time! I vanquish the darkness! Even. I was thinking maybe putting slight losing just because it can be a little difficult to react to things on Wi-Fi, like with the whip and stuff like that. But I don't think it's so bad that it's going to change the matchup much. He's going to throw stuff. You're going to throw stuff. Kind of like how I was talking about Min Min earlier. If you are getting caught by their arms, yeah, it's going to be bad. Just like you're getting caught by his whip, but it's the same goes for him. You knock him up in the air, he has an exploitable recovery to some degree. If not, you get your combo, you rinse and repeat. Purples are going to beat through a lot of things, you know? He throws an axe, he throws a cross. There's lag with that move, and those moves cover very specific things. Like, axe goes up, cross goes forward, right? You jump, you intercept, even if it's a latch damage. Or something to, like, run in, parry it, jump, fair. And then you start a tech chase from there. He has a get-out-of-shield option game with his up, be sure. But you really shouldn't be hitting a shield that often. Because why would he be shielding if you're that close like why are you going to get this close to him without him already doing something so you're just going to play your back and forth game and you're just going to keep trading hits until one of you eventually die or you kind of figure out the other's rhythm but i don't think it's specifically lopsided to one or the other just be, you know take note of his whip range and just don't get f tilted and fair and bared a lot it'll be a little hard you might have to adjust maybe go to a stage with some more platforms that'll kind of mix up your game plan but pikmin can intercept a lot of his stuff they can fuck up his holy water stuff just be just be careful ridley I'll put even, honestly, online. I think it can be a little frustrating to react to things, especially with side B, dash attack online. Really near is fantastic, especially for keeping you in disadvantage in your offstage, like dropping down from the ledge. Character hits hard. That being said, very big combo food. If you play it safe, you keep your distance, you don't overextend, you kind of just rinse and repeat, and you can make it difficult. But I do find that they can catch you off guard with stuff due to being harder to react offline or online. And that helps equalize it somewhat. But I think Olimar is just going to stick to his general game plan, especially against heavies. It's like, I'll just run away and throw stuff, and you'll have to approach. And as long as I do my job right, I should be fine. But it's so hard to do that consistently online that it makes it a bit more even. Rob! Oh, ding, 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 ding. We got a bad one. All right, I'll just cut the crap. The character mashes a lot. Nair, massive hitbox. It's actually thoughtless how easy it is to hit. And it puts you in the air, which is bad. Down tilt, spamble, unreactable, bad. You're going to be in a bad spot. You really should not lose to a Rob unless they're bad and they're fucking up. That being said, they're going to fuck up because they always do. Gyro can really disrupt your flow. Laser can disrupt things, you know, because you do something and the next thing you know you're hit because you just, you're essentially playing with the delay. Sure, Rob is combo food and I think he's probably one of the more generous ones in the big losing matchup because they can definitely tip. But with how easy it is for him to just press his buttons all the time, you're not, you shouldn't be doing that. You have to play in this really weird way where you hit him and then you kind of get your combo and then you just respect his landing. You respect his ledge game probably because he's going to rise in the up air and then you just run away and rinse and repeat and pray that it doesn't get super crazy. Grabbing gyro is really good if you can because then you can incorporate it into your own shield pressure if you want, especially if you have purples. So you can like grab gyro, purple side B, purple side B, gyro throw and just con oh, and just constantly put them in this like weird limbo of how to, how to pressure. But it's really easy to hit those side Bs. Remember side B. I actually want to look something up real quick. I'm pretty sure it's uh, not that bad, but well, we're going to get a quick... I'm going to give you a concrete answer. Side B. The arm rotor is unreactable online and is a reflector, multi-hit, and kill move. I repeat, unreactable. So what are they going to do? They're going to mash it. We are on the stage fighting him. Oh, he's going to smash. He's dead. Oh, you're at the ledge. Oh, he's dead. Oh, I hit him with one of my combos. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> Thoughtless. 
it's a very polarizing gameplay element. You can win, 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 and then at the drop of a hat, you lose because you can't react to these things and they don't stop pressing their buttons because they're safe. So it's just very frustrating. How do I feel? I'm fucking exhausted, but I'm going to see this matchup chart out. All fine as well. Yeah, 13 frames, which is on the lower end. You'd, like, you'd, have, to, you'd have to have a really crazy reaction time to, I think, react to that consistently offline. So you damn sure know it's unreactable online. It's unsafe on shield. Come on. Of course. It's minus 37 on shield. Right, right. That matters. Rob it. I Let's think just the scale. slight winning. Run away. Throw stuff. Block out a lot of Robin's projectiles. Just respect, you know, certain 11 sword aerials and things like that. And you should be fine. Just don't get super crazy about it. And then you're going to put the character into an awkward spot because they have really bad mobility. They're kind of combo food too. Yellows and reds are super good. Yellows especially. They just kind of beat out all the thunder spells. Purples always crack people open. But just exploit the fact that they have bad mobility and they have to approach. And when they have to approach, you punish. It, it, it's really straightforward, honestly. Like, there's not much there. It's very similar to offline. And I don't think... Like, they might have a slight advantage with throwing out, like, the lighter thunder spells being a bit harder to react to. But on average, as long as you're playing the, like, mid-range, forcing them to approach game, using your Pikmin to block things with the way you're, like, throwing them and spacing them, it's not going to change that much. And it's going to put them in an awkward spot. I already think Robin loses to begin with, so. All right, Rosa. <laughs> I am super biased here. As the buzz is the only, like, really competent understanding Rosa I've seen. That being said, I do think it's even. I would like to play it more. I don't think Rosalina necessarily wins. I think the buzz just has a very good understanding of it, but I've taken games before, and I know there's plenty of room for growth there. You just need to be very on top of what you're doing. You know, she has great pressure with uh, the Luma, like kind of creating shield block or block string setups where there's safe pressure where they can get a grab after it. The Luma shot, or sorry, the star bits is a great disruptive option. And down B obviously will take all of your side Bs and your uh, uh, smash attacks away. That being said, you can intercept her with your sword-like aerials if you bait out a down B, which you can because they'll try and down B things. You can get a solid punish on them because it's kind of laggy. If you're really good about it, you can edge guard them well. It's a little tough, but you know her up B doesn't have a hitbox, so it can be a little bit vulnerable. Just be careful about what you're doing. Understand, you know, you have a big character here that dies really easy, similar to Mewtwo. It's just the way she can pressure you and kind of combo you it can be. It can go both ways and the destructive power, but I think it's not actually one-sided because Olimar can still get a lot of chip damage. She's, she's not just going to spam side B or down B all the time, and if she does, then you just go punish her. Roy, failure is even. not an option. Funny enough, like his up B is worse than Crom's on average, in my opinion. Like it's a bit better, I think, out of shield, but it's not as like frustrating to get hit by, and it's not going to kill you the same. Like you're not going to accidentally die to it off stage. He does hit very hard with the sweet spots, but I think the fact that having sour spots helps a lot. Um, it's kind of like a Marth feeling. Great character, but I think the fact that he's not as consistent makes it a little bit harder for him. That kind of helps even it out compared to Krom, where you would normally just be able to press buttons and always win, but his buttons won't always just kill you. And that gives you more time to help even things out. Plus, his up B is a bit easier to hit, especially with a two-frame down smash or something like that. Sheik, this character sucks. Olimar shits on her. Yeah, you can do some stuff with Sheik, and I fault Sheik's in the past who have done like solid combos and damage, but on average, like she dies so easy her combos are kind of inconsequential pairing is honestly really good against her even if you can't do it if you can do it online because she doesn't hit hard so if she you parry a fair it's probably not going to kill your purple up smash and she's going to die potentially or something like that you know you can block bouncing fish and stuff with pikmin you can block needles with pikmin too given right circumstances and it's just easy to hit her she doesn't have the best safe pressure grounded so she relies on aerials and since she relies on aerials she has to fall with them so similar to something like ike with his Nair, you hit them on their rise. So it's just kind of knowing what they're going to do. And because she's so, like, low low danger with a lot of her hitboxes and combos, sure, she has good ones that can kill and things like that, but on average, it's not that bad. You just kind of outclass her in, in the impact of what you do. Shulk, even. Yeah, this he has good Monado's buttons, and he swings a lot. But his frame data on startup is really slow, and that's kind of something you can exploit, as long as you understand how the Monado arts work and how to get around them. You know, if there's smash right, you hold shield sits in her stage. If it's speed, you don't spot dodge as much and you intercept his short hops. If it's jump, you know, you can try and intercept his full hops or where he's going to land instead of where he's starting. If it's shield, you run away sometimes if you want or if you want to go in there and combo with something like an up smash, that's totally fine. If it's buster, probably you're going to want to retreat and not play that game. Maybe go for side B chip damage. It's going to change consistently based on what Monado already is using, but it's not, there's not really a distinct advantage, I think, for Shulk online. You're just going to try and hit your parry stuff, but it's a little bit more easy with him since his moves have such high startup. You'll be able to react a bit easier, especially with the way he approaches with them. 
So it just feels very back and forth. You can kill him somewhat easily. He can kill you easily with smash art stuff, or if he gets a really good advantage state, the neutral's very back and forth. Just be careful about what you're hitting a shield with so he doesn't up you. But you do have some leeway in 50-50s in there with like a fresh up smash with purple. But it's not it's not like bad. Snake. Can't be waiting, in, huh? Actually, put that winning. Slight winning. You're just gonna play the back and forth game. He's gonna throw grenades, you're gonna throw a Pikmin. You throw your Pikmin right, you're probably gonna be able to intercept. You're probably gonna be able to get the damage lead. Just be mindful of things like dash attack and hitting a shield, he has dare to shield and his tilts are really good. But you just need to be mindful of your spacing and you should be able to intercept him a lot. I think just Wi-Fi might help him a little bit, but I don't think it's too much because the way he's gonna naturally play. And I think that's fine. Just play your game and make him play into it because at the end of the day you're probably going to be setting the tone he doesn't have a move that just invalidates your projectiles like you know something like a me swordsman or a mewtwo where they kind of force you to respect them he doesn't he just does his own things and yours are better at intercepting them assuming you're doing it very well and you can chase his advantage state you can punish him in a lot of ways like you don't have to get crazy against him just respect his frame data respect his tilts and you should be fine sonic let's let's be real guys don't lose ever if you play sonic you here's here's how the game starts Go! Bring! Spin dash combo. Timeout. That's what you should do. Go to a big stage. Timeout. It's game over. But Sonic players don't do that good enough, I guess. So they lose. Sometimes. But realistically, like, the character's super safe. Unreactable on, like, three-fourths of every stage. So you're guessing. And I have to swing. My smash attacks are clanking. He sees I do something. He aborts. Homing attack. Unreactable. Like, commit. It's just... You're, you're playing against the fastest thing in the game with easy buttons that are consistent and do what they need that are unreactable. It's like peak unreactable gameplay. So you're constantly chasing him, having to make consistent reads. And that's assuming that you're playing an even game where the percents are around the same. If he has a lead and you have to approach it and he wants to time you out, you will lose. That's just the nature of online. You you actually cannot read him enough unless they are just hard fucking up. Should, uh, like, Rob and Cloud, you can kind of navigate something. A Sonic player should lose under no circumstance to an Olimar player online. If they do, the Sonic player is fucking up drastically. You have to be read so much. Terry, honestly, I think hey, come on, come on. only slight losing because of okay? Wi-Fi. He's kind of like the other Shotos, but I think his buttons are a little bit more frustrating to deal with. The... The way he can combo out of jab and consistently things like the uh, burning knuckle and power dunk can be a bit frustrating. His up B is a little bit easier to exploit, I feel. But the go meter can be very annoying. Uh, if you get caught slipping, you react at the wrong time or you commit at the wrong time. And he busts the wolf, you randomly, you die, cover a lot of distance. And he's just like the most annoying version of the Shoto because he has an easier time getting on you, I feel. He doesn't need to rely off just like Tatsumaki just to punish you. He can just get in with his own buttons. He has solid aerials, solid mobility to go with. And online, it's just a bit harder to deal with things. And you can get called slipping and get comboed very easily off like a jab or a down tilt. So it's just the nature of online making his buttons a bit more efficient than they should be. Two and Link. I'd want to put in like slight winning. I think out of all the links, he's kind of the most tame. He doesn't have a crazy, like, fr he doesn't have crazy frame data like the others. He doesn't have a stupid sex kick like them. His projectiles are a bit slower and easier to deal with. And he has solid combos, bombs to fair, boomerang to fair. His upgrade is really good at last a while. But he's tamer than them and that he doesn't have, like, one or two buttons that are just like, I win! And I think that lends to Olimar being able to navigate around his moveset a bit easier, intercept him better, block his projectiles, and kill him overall easier. His out of shield game is good, like his up B is a solid out of shield button, but I don't believe it hits as hard as Link's, and that is a bit better, honestly. Like, it, the, his worst kill power than something like Link, and not having that really over centralizing there, I think makes it a little bit worse for him. Villager, kind of like you have the Lloyd Rocket, which is going to go horizontal, so it's going to give me a type of effect I have to deal with. It's also like plus 26 on shield or something, so it creates really good block strings. The tree can provide a really frustrating dynamic to the ledge. That being said, it's still very much the same character in a lot of ways. You know, similar aerials, things like that. It's just, he's going to have a hard time approaching. As long as you're intercepting him well, I think you can stop out a lot of what he does. Understanding when you need to, like, F-Smash the Lloyd Rocket or things like that to block it. And then you just kind of hit him, rinse and repeat. He doesn't have, like, the best, best approach options. And I think just playing your long-range game well is going to lend to your success more. Wario. Wario nonsense aside, just, like, randomly dying, I think... He has buttons, but the way... And he has, like, mobility. Warrior, like, he has good buttons and he has good frame data and mobility, but it's not as, like, oppressive in the sense of, like, a Mario or Lucina. And I think because he kind of... He doesn't have, like, a Mario Bear or something, right? Or, like, a Mario Nair to combo break or Mario Abita to out-of-shield option. Or, like, the frame-two jab. 
his gameplay is a bit more different. It's like he throws stuff out, but you can intercept it a bit easier. And I think that makes a big difference. Purples can give him a lot of trouble too because of the way he's approaching. That being said, he obviously has a fantastic combo game, very safe pressure, and he can always waft you and you just die off like a random, off like a, a frame two or a minus two landing up air or, a, or an up tilt or something that he spammed four times. And that'll help lend to his success some. But I think Olimar has the tools to generally deal with him, just camp him out, make him approach. It might just honestly turn into one of those matchups where whoever has the lead is going to camp and it's going to be frustrating for the other one. But I don't think it's specifically one-sided based off his tools. We Fit Trainer, good I want to put in, in slight winning. I know I fought We Train, We Fit Trainers before and they're pretty good at what they do. But I think the more you know about this character, if you're really like in tune with all of their little tricks and stuff, you can block out a lot of their mix-ups, their projectiles, and just camp them out and make them approach. And when they have to approach, they suffer. Just respect, you know, back out of shield, deep breathing stuff. They can hit very hard. They can combo you and kill you very easily. But as long as you understand their game plan and use your picking properly, you'll intercept them and force them to approach. And then they'll end up being in a worse spot than if they weren't. You know, just don't get foolish around the ledge. Woof. This Are is, in my opinion, the last big losing matchup. It's like the big four. I was talking about the spaces earlier. Wolf is essentially take Fox and Air, make it bigger and make it better. And then put it on a character who hits harder and has better buttons in general like you're gonna nair into dash attack you're gonna nair into other areas potentially you're gonna nair into grab it's big it kills my pikmin it's kind of like a link nair mix that with a transcendent laser that beats everything that has a hitbox on pull out to kill pikmin too on top of a reflector on top of aerials that combo into themselves fair into back air back air hits like a truck you die to that at like 60 off of fair you know a recovery that can sometimes kill you if you're if you're foolish around the ledge and you don't do it perfectly. And F tilt that can, he has like three different buttons that can two frame you and they can all kill you. An up smash that can't clank and has absurd reach that can catch you. And up smash that's very hard to punish unless you're literally like frame perfect. He's just kind of built as a character that will mash on top of you, whether it be projectile or not, and his buttons will be better. You know, kind of like Cloud and Rob, you can deal with it. You can beat them if you're really on point, if you're really pushing yourself and you're pairing things and you're not overextending and you're getting your purples. But their job is going to be infinitely easier because they don't mix things up. They just press their buttons and they win. Yoshi. Wow. Neutral. Kind of like Wario in a sense. It's like he throws his buttons. He has solid projectiles to mix it up. But you kind of match what he does. And it's just a matter of like, is he going to get his combo or his dunks first? Or are you going to keep stumping him out with your aerials, your tilts, your side piece, and then punish him before he's able to get you some crazy combo? There's really not much there. I do think online lends a little bit to his success because he can kind of press his buttons a little bit easier. It can, it's easier to get caught slipping. Maybe you side beat at the wrong time. And, like, you can call by an egg because it's not a, things aren't as precise. But just be careful about what you're doing. And then just intercept him as he jumps and stuff like that. Be careful. You know, be mindful of where he's throwing eggs. And you can try and intercept them as they go through or kind of get chip damage with your side B. You know, chip damage is going to be a lot of benefit for you. It's going to force your opponent to play in a way that's going to benefit you. Because it's going to force them to either respond or approach. And depending on what they do, then you will change your plan accordingly. Yeah, when I do the offline one, I'll probably bring up both and kind of show them. Young Link, I would put in slight losing online. He's kind of like Mario in that he just presses a bunch of buttons, except he's also got crazy projectiles to go with it that are like super safe, combo into themselves, do all this nonsense. And it's just a storm of buttons that are hard to deal with and it's easy to get overwhelmed. Sure, he can die easy and sure his range isn't the greatest or whatever, but it doesn't really matter when you can't punish most of the stuff he does either because you're playing in delay or it's just naturally safe. But you can intercept him, you can beat his stuff, but it's He's just going to press more buttons. The only reason he's not higher is because his buttons don't hit crazy hard all the time. Similar to, like, Mario's. Zelda. <laughs> Online, I'm going to put a slight losing just because it's easy to fuck up. And the burden of execution is on you. Because they're going to mash neutral B. And they're going to mash their buttons. And they're going to be able to get close, too close to them. And you're going to commit to a side B at the wrong time. And since everything's delayed, you're going to get up, beat, and die. And Phantom can catch you because it'd be a little bit harder to deal with it. And it's just harder than it should be. You know, in a normal setting... You're just going to beat Shadow of the Zelda. She's not a good character. You're going to run away from her. You're going to make her approach and things like that. And you can still apply that here. And I think you could argue this could be an even matchup. But it's just easy to fuck up and get clipped by a reflector, die to extate. No exaggeration. Use the move three times in a row. And you think to yourself, well, there's no way they're that stupid. Why would they three times? And then you're the stupid one because you didn't assume they were going to hit the fucking B button three times in a row. And then you get clipped by the smallest shard of Neru's love because Olimar's hurt box expands into the fucking next galaxy next to the Milky Way. So, be careful. But take it slow, force them to approach, try and make them play your game, just be mindful of the neutral B. Alright, last one, zero suit. Olimar wins. I think her hitboxes are kind of modest. Yeah, she has the LB out of shield, which is really good. 
but she's very linear with her hitboxes, so you can kind of navigate around them. You kill her very easily. You can lag out some of her stuff with your Pikmin. You can crouch some things. Just be careful of how she's approaching and don't hit her shield foolishly. And don't get, like, super greedy off stage to try and, like, fuck with downbeat. You should be fine. The way she pressures isn't super, like, reaction-based. It's kind of just, you'll see it coming and it's going to be good. Know when to deal with it. Know when to get out of there. And you should beat her. She's always suffered with, like, small, hard-hitting characters. And all of ours know no different. You're going to hit harder than her. You're going to combo her. Just know when to respect her really good buttons like everyone has to and reset and keep up playing her in neutral. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this matchup. All right. Online, I will post this on YouTube in the coming whenever. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the 12-hour stream. It was a lot of fun, honestly. Lots of lots of uh, viewer battle fun. I really enjoyed the Mario Kart, too. I'm glad we did that. I don't know when I'm going to do another one of these because this is really draining. And to be honest, my hands should not realistically be doing this. It's going to be out of my hell no. I probably take more off. But but no, I enjoyed it. And I hope you guys enjoyed it too. That's it. No, this these are all echoes or palette swaps. There's nothing else. Classic show me, yeah. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all the support I got today. I'm going to go get some Taco Bell. Slowly fall asleep, I guess.